I guess the, the big news of ASCO 2017 in prostate cancer is the fact that adding abiraterone to standard androgen deprivation therapy has a huge impact on overall survival, particularly in men presenting with uncurable prostate cancer. Now that comes from the UK Stampede trial conducted in the UK and Switzerland uh, and also from another commercially sponsored inter global trial which give almost uncannily similar results with a 37% reduction in death from prostate cancer by simply adding in abiraterone plus prednisolone to standard androgen deprivation therapy for this group of men which encompasses men presenting with metastatic disease but also men with high risk locally advanced prostate cancer. Uh, and if you look at the effect on failure free survival, uh, it's a huge impact on reducing the risk of failure of treatment. So uh, this is going to transform the care of prostate cancer. There'll be all sorts of issues, we're going to have to access the drug, still a very high cost drug at the moment, but nonetheless this is a massive step forward for prostate cancer. Uh, so, so in terms of impact that's the one that's really going to make the big difference. Um, we also saw uh, interesting data, I mean one of the sort of questions we've been asking in prostate cancer for a long time now is should we be offering patients abiraterone and enzalutamide in sequence, in combination, which one should we use first, etc. Uh, and of course we've got a lot of retrospective data suggesting that there's marginal activities from giving one treatment if they've all patients already failed the other. Uh, and we saw the results of the PLATO trial. Uh, the PLATO trial was quite an interesting trial, so they, this is patients who are essentially failing um, uh, enzalutamide uh, and the, the question was if you then give those patients abiraterone do they also do they benefit further from giving them con from continuing the enzalutamide so the idea here being that patients who are uh, resistant to uh, enzalutamide that resistance is partly mediated through upregulation of androgens so if you add in um, it, abiraterone does it does, does it inhibit the effect of that potential resistance mechanism? So that this is a, a phase three trial, so it's patients who had, who had PSA rise, first PSA rise on enzalutamide. They were then randomized to receive either abiraterone plus prednisolone or a combination of abiraterone and enzalutamide. Um, so the first observation is that actually ad giving abiraterone in this, I think, probably the biggest prospective study we've seen asking the question of abiraterone after enzalutamide, you get very little back. Minim minimal responses, uh, minimal impact on progression-free survival. Uh, and disappointingly, giving the combination adds, uh, adds no more. It's a negative study. So, uh, so, th 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 so, so in other words, giving combination abienza after failure of enza doesn't really give any clinical benefit. So although a negative study, actually I think it goes a long way to answering some really important clinical questions there. The, the other study which was, um, uh, I think, potentially practice changing here um, was the trial which was the, the final results of the, of the trial exploring the optimum duration of androgen deprivation therapy for men undergoing radiotherapy as a primary treatment for localised disease. So uh, this, the previously accepted standard of care in most centres would be 36 months of, th of therapy and this was a trial uh, exploring whether 18 months was as good as 36 months. Uh, fundamentally, the mature data there show there's virtually no difference in terms of efficacy, in terms of overall survival, uh, i.e. the 18 months seems to have the same overall survival effect as, uh, as 36 months. Um, the statistics, are not. this is not a non-inferiority trial uh, and so actually it still leaves a few questions here but what is clear is that 18 months of androgen deprivation therapy is associated with better tolerability, better overall quality of life. So I think it does give us a lot more reassurance, particularly maybe in a man who's struggling with the side effects of androgen deprivation therapy, that you probably can safely stop it at 18 months. Whether or not we'll make this the standard of care for everybody, who knows? Uh, I think we need to discuss that further.